Oh, Billy Freckle Tits. Really enjoyed uh, being on the beach. So I was talking about how I... Um, kayaking. That's something I could do at the beach. I can get into that. And I got a paddle. I can beat away the fucking sharks. Hey, old Chrome Dome. Um, heard you, one of the best things I ever heard one time I was, as far as Chrome goes, and the only guy I ever heard say it, I was uh, on one of those fan boats in the Everglades in Florida. Um, and one of them had, we pulled up to one because one had broken down with all these alligators. And they were talking about the boat how it looked good, but, it, you know, it wasn't running. And this guy was smoking a cigarette, this redneck dude. And he goes, well, it won't, if it won't go, chrome it, is what he said. I think that's what he said. If it won't go, chrome it, or if it won't run, chrome it. And me and my wife started laughing because I was immediately thinking, like, yeah, if it looks like shit, shine it up. Someone will buy it. I don't know if that's an expression. If you live in Florida, you know, if you're a redneck, and there's no shame in that, all right, because I'm white trash. I'm white trash all fucking day long. All right? I would eat chip beef on toast tonight. Tonight. You know? What do you want to talk? You want to talk a dual family house? You want to talk about squirrels in the walls? I'm all over it. Talk to you all day. <laughs> you want to talk about a basement that smells like it's been underwater for 100 years? We can, we, we can do this. We can have this conversation. Rednecks are white trash that know how to fix shit. That's how I look at it. White trash is just fucking, they're just trash. You're like, yeah, just blowing down the street. Oh, God, this fucking guy, right? Um, hey, old Chrome Dome, heard, you looking, heard you're looking at kayaks. Check out Hobby. Hobie, I guess is how you say it. Oh, like the Hobie Baker Award. Hobie kayaks. They're expensive. Dude, I don't want to be on some cheap hunk of shit out there. But in addition to paddling propulsion, they also have foot pedal drives where you just pedal yourself where you want to go. You'll be able to fit your little ones on there with you, too. Wait a minute. And he's got a link. I don't live anywhere near the water, and I'm I'm thinking of buying this. Would you look at those? Oh, my God. How Okay, these are all beautiful. How, How expensive are they? All right, let's click on one. Let's go with the nice fucking, we'll go with the neon yellow. Take a test ride on this thing. 1500 bucks. I'd fucking buy one of those. In a, I would fucking buy one of those. Of course, I got to live in a state with no fucking water. Does anybody out here go kayaking? Also, sounded like you mentioned the ones people were standing on. Those are stand up paddle, paddle boards. It kind of seemed like people use those to get out to their boat um, or sups. Uh, Boat, B-O-T-E, makes some pretty good ones, and they even have one where you can, you can convert to a little motorized boat slash sup, stand-up paddleboard. All right, boatboard.com, B-O-T-E board.com. Might even get you more into fishing. Hope you and your family are doing well. Go fuck yourself. If I ever went fishing, I would catch one fish, and that would be it. Like, I'm eating this. I'm done. I'm not trying to get the biggest one. I'm not trying to get more than the guy next to me. I'm just taking what I need. All right? Maybe I should do 23 in me and see if I have any Native American in me. Huh? How badass would that be if I was part of Apache? Um, sharks and helicopters. Deer spotted scrotum scalp. Jesus Christ. Going for marrow on that one. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Jesus, are you? And a gen- and generally agree with your point of view. But your most your recent rant about shark attacks is absolutely ridiculous. First of all, I hate to be well. First of all, okay, you insult, which I think I have a beautiful head. I'm standing by that. I have a beautiful head. I take care of it. I lotion it up. I laser off anything that's unsightly. You know, I keep it fucking. I keep it. You know, I keep it shaved, nice and smooth. All right, so fuck yourself on that one. Then you tell me you're a huge fan of mine, so you draw me back in. This is an abusive relationship, okay? You say something that if I wasn't such a strong person, didn't have a little bit of Apache blood in me, I would have started crying, okay? But I shook that off. Then you fucking draw me back in by saying I'm, you're a huge fan. And then, you, then, then your very next, it wasn't even the same sentence, dot, dot, dot. You tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. 
Well, I have to tell you, as a social justice warrior who's trying to live his best life, you're probably right. I have a ridiculous fear of sharks. I do. I know it is. I know it's ridiculous. All right. First of all, I hate the beach. I hate the sand, the sun, the seaweed, the stupid fucking jellyfish. I hate the goddamn winter and all the dumbass people who waste their days there. The water. Sorry. I hate the goddamn water. I was like, Jesus, he's jumping seasons here. I hate the goddamn water and all the dumbass people who waste their days there. But I'm sure as shit not afraid of sharks. All right. Well, it doesn't sound like you go anywhere near them. Your whole bit about being attacked by a shark is no different than some cunt crying about the dangers of helicopters. Uh, there, there's way more helicopter crashes per year than shark attacks, by the way. Okay, fair enough. I've never understood doing that. Going from one variable to another, because it isn't just as simple as that. I would say there's way more people. Now, there isn't way more people flying helicopters. Eh, you know what? Maybe that's a good one. Maybe that is a good one. I have no idea. But all I know is the helicopter is not trying to kill me. (laughs) I kind of have to put in some work to make it kill me. But I guess sharks are the same way. If you have a phobia of sharks, then man up and own that shit. Admit it's an irrational and own the phobia. Stop making excuses. You sound like like a little bitch. Love the podcast and go fuck yourself. Listen. I don't know what me being afraid of sharks just fucking triggered in you, but I I don't like, what the fuck was that? What are you, some fucking football coach from the seventies? I've always said that I'm fucking terrified of them and there's no fucking way I'm going. I'm allowed to have a fear. All right. You know what you sound like? You sound like somebody needs to go home and go hug his dad. Go fuck yourself. Fucking cunt. I fly helicopters. All right. I got the balls to do that. But just because you got the balls to do that doesn't mean I go fucking cave diving. I like swimming. I like to, I like, the same way I fly is the same way I swim. I try to minimize the risk. I try to put the odds in my favor. That's what I do. Okay? That's just what I do. There's some people, if they're going to deep fry a turkey, they're going to do it on their deck. They're going to do it on their wooden deck and they're going to just, yeah, you know, I could fucking, you know, I don't think anybody's going to tip it over. And they take that risk. And there's other people, they do it in the driveway with the fire extinguisher there. That, that's how I am. That's how I am. Okay. And uh, what is stop making excuses? That, all, that whole thing fascinated. That took me way back in my life. You have a phobia of sharks, then man up and own that shit. I, I, I feel like I am by saying how much I have it. Uh, how afraid I am of the ocean. I literally say I'm terrified of the ocean. I think I've said that a thousand times in this podcast. Admit it's irrational. In other words, agree with you <laughs> and own the phobia. Listen, it's not irrational. The level that I have is is probably irrational. The odds of it happening, okay? Yes, absolutely. I'll admit to that, but it's not irrational. It's not something to not be concerned of. Uh, <laughs> stop making excuses. You sound like a little bitch. Oh, well, listen to the tough guy who never goes to the fucking beach or goes in the goddamn water. Jesus Christ. I wish I was. Dude, Jesus, fine, whatever. All right. God bless you, sir. I agree with everything you say. I will, I will try to be less of a bitch. There we go. All right. Next invasion. Dear Billy from the future. Uh, what country do you think the U.S.? And its corporate allies invade next. Oh, I like this question. I think it's 10 to 1. I think 10 to 1, it's in the Middle East. It might seem hacky, but I just don't see the troops rolling in to anywhere else. Next up, I'd say Northern Africa and then South America is a close third. I will tell you this. I like your picks, but I would actually say that I would say South America is next. And we're going to invade lush land because water, fresh water is going to be the next oil that they're going to go after. Um, I think that eventually, hopefully sooner rather than later, people are going to realize that. Uh, I, well, I don't know. You'd have to. The thing about it is we we've been slaves to the oil companies and the banks forever. So. 
you know, you're going back to like, I mean, that is just pure evil. Um, the amount of people that both of those lines of businesses have killed over the years. I mean, I can't imagine where the number's at. It has to be in the fucking hundreds of millions that people have, that those two basic jobs have killed. And the desire for making money and the desire for um, gaining control of oil, getting oil and selling oil and all that, the amount of people that have died, innocent people, is just off the charts. But they have a ton of fucking money. So I like, you know, I like your pick about the Middle East. We're already there, so it's very easy to demonize another country there. Um, Northern Africa. I don't know. I think it's going to be South America. Um, yeah. But I really love your question and the fun way you put the evil shit that we've been doing. Uh, in the way... <laughs> It's fucking bananas. It's fucking bananas. And by the way, us leaving Afghanistan, I mean, am I out of my mind? Does that not look like a frame for frame reenactment of us leaving Vietnam? Like if you literally show us leaving Afghanistan and play Jimi Hendrix, Hey Joe, or some doors or something like that, it's the exact same event all over again. Um, I don't know. For the life of me, I've said it forever. I do not understand how war is still legal. I just don't get it. Um, I don't give a. Sh I don't understand why people give a fuck so much about money. You know, once you have enough, why do you want more? I don't understand that. I just don't get any of that. I just wish that these fucking fucking people would stand up to these suits. They're literally people in suits. Just stand up to them, tell them to go fuck themselves and go in a different direction. And maybe we could fucking help people. I don't know. I don't know. All right. That's sorry. That was old Billy Bergenstock there. All right. Australia. Yo, Billy of the North. And Aussie here writing in. It's getting crazy, mate. Our lockdowns are severely worse than almost all of the world. Despite things getting better, the irrational rule of this shitty governance is getting worse. You may have seen videos going around of kids being taken from parents because of a positive COVID test. Everyone is outraged, but there is a great divide between people in our country. Sounds familiar. Even the ones that think it is wrong will still defend the fact that it's being done, which is totally backward if you ask me. Poor kids got to sleep somewhere strange with people in hazmat suits delivering them food on a tray. I'm sure that won't cause any life-lasting trauma. And if that doesn't twist your asshole... <laughs> <laughs> Check out the dog shelter where the cops went in and shot all the dogs by order of the city. I don't want to watch that. Bjorkshire Council in the state, state's northwest killed the dogs to prevent volunteers at a Cobar-based animal shelter from traveling to pick up the animals last week. According to Council Watchdog, the Office of Local Government. All right, as an American, just seeing how fucked up you guys are, I hate to say this in a selfish way, made me feel a little bit better. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no solution to the COVID thing. I mean, it's like people are going to do whatever the fuck they want to do. Um, I'll, I, the kids are suffering, and the reason why they're suffering is because everybody thinks they know the solution, even though they don't have a medical degree. I've been saying this from the beginning. If we all just did the same thing, if we were all doing the same thing, it would be so much easier to predict this thing. But if, you know, half the people are running this way and the other half are running 180 degrees in the other different direction, it's like what we keep doing, it's like there's a house on fire. We keep putting out half the house and then moving in and then getting surprised that it gets engulfed in flames again. Um, it, what we're going to have to do is what we've never done ever is all get together and work and respect each other and all pull in the same direction, which is, you know, we're failing this test miserably. <laughs> and then when we try to get people, and I've been guilty of this too, of uh, we try to get people to come to our way of thinking is we then insult them like, hey, fuckhead, why don't you fucking get your head out of your head? Like who's listening after, hey, fuckhead? I've been guilty of that too. 
not to mention sounding like a bitch about my shark stuff. <laughs> you know what? I so wish I didn't read that email. I wish I kept that to myself and I would have just kept ramping up how much I'm afraid of sharks. Just, just the level of anger in that email I loved because I relate to it so much. Um, yeah, let me focus. Let me focus on this guy and this shit. I do like I flipped out about not being able to find a spatula the other day in the kitchen. I was like, wait a minute, what am I really mad at? And I figured it out and I dealt with it. And then looking back at yelling about a spatula, it just seems so fucking ridiculous to me. Um, or maybe I didn't understand the tone of it. That could have been that. Anyway, overrated, underrated, everybody. Underrated. Reading a book on the beach. Jesus, that seemed like it would hurt your eyes. You know, <laughs> sitting there with the sun glaring down on the book. You must have some really nice sunglasses. Uh, reading a book on the beach. I heard you talk about, oh, my God, sitting in the sun reading. That, that, I, would, I would rather get waterboarded. I heard you talk about your ocean stay. I love to read, but never do. And the only place I can do, I can is on the beach. I get that. You have pigment, you know, and you have a brain. So that must be amazing. That sounds great. So I'm I'm happy for you. Uh, It's the only time I ever finished a book in my adult life. If I don't finish, I have to wait till the next summer till I'm on the beach to even finish. That's really interesting. Um, My thing, you know, underrated being at the beach after the sun is down. In 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 uh, twilight, that is the best for me. That is the best. Going for a nice swim, then you know, trying to block out that woman who fucking swam at the beginning of fucking Jaws. You know, that's what I think about. I get really really scared. God, I get scared. Goosebumps. <laughs> Just trying to get this guy to yell at his fucking laptop right now. Uh, overrated, but I do think about that. Overrated libraries for studying. Being surrounded by people who are all pretending to not look around and do work can be tough. College libraries aren't as bad because they have chairs spread out all around in weird places. You know what? I just read that. and I didn't hear a word I just said because I was really thinking about this guy saying how irrational my fear was. And dude, when I tell you I went to go walk out on that sandbar that went an eighth of a mile out. And when I got 30 feet offshore, like I literally wanted to keep walking and couldn't. And I just turned back around. I was just like, I just, I can't. It's, it's, it, it's too big. The fucking thing is just too fucking big. I can't handle it. I'm a small town pool guy. Um, over, I want to read stories about people facing their fears and then dying. Let's see if that happens. Cause that's fucking only you get out there and face your fear. You fucking pussy. And imagine if I went out there and got eaten by a shark. That would be so funny. You guys couldn't even get, you couldn't even get, You'd be a little sad, I'd like to think, but the, the comedy would just outweigh it. So then the guy goes, get over your fucking fear. And the fucking orange cut gets eaten by a shark. You guys be laughing forever. People who faced their fears and then died. How do you spell died? D-I-E-D, doesn't look right. These famous figures suffer from unique phobias. Amazing leaders who once had stage fright. Seven, seven steps to overcoming your fear of death. Necrophobia. I thought this said necrophilia. Seven steps to overcome your necrophilia. Start with fucking people who are sleeping. Please get their consent first. All right. Um, okay, here we go. This is... These famous figures suffered from unique phobias. All right. Kings and presidents have always been keen to be seen as wise. Here's a big, long intro. Fuck all of that. Okay, 19. Hans Christian Andersen. Hans. Hans Christian Andersen. What does this guy do? Was he, was he a sailor or did he write a book? The Danish writer, Hans Christian Anderson had a vivid imagination and obsessive thoughts of being buried alive dominated his later years. Oh, what if I'm still alive? Well, then he should have killed himself. Uh, had a col- <laughs> Don't ever have me work suicide hotline. Had a colorful imagination over the course of his prolific career. I'll be the judge of that. Sorry. Uh, he wrote a number of children's classics, including The Emperor's New Clothes, 
The Ugly Duckling, and of course, The Little Mermaid. I didn't know he wrote The Little Mermaid. How did Disney get the rights to that? He probably, they probably told his next of kin, if you don't sell us that, the rights to The Little Mermaid, we will bury you alive. Uh, however, his ripe imagination and active mind was often a curse as well as a blessing. Anderson had a number of fears, not the least the fear of being buried alive. He even took active measures to ensure that he would never endure his, this fate worth, worth, worse than death. Somebody wrote worth than death. Is it possible to write in a lisp? Worth, worth than death. Uh, not that such a fear was completely irrational. At the very least, it was certainly understandable given the time. The Victorian era was undoubtedly the golden age of taphophobia, fear of the grave. The popular press regularly printing sensational, almost certainly inaccurate tales of people waking up, waking up in a coffin six feet under. Oh, Jesus. Star Magazine. FDR was so terrifi- terrified of fires, he refused to lock the doors of his White House bedroom. And he used to do fireside chats to America. America. Adolf Hitler. Ad- after the war, Hitler's own dentist revealed... What a bad patient the dictator was. Oh, my God. He killed six million people and he had bad breath. I mean, what? Jesus, how the fuck did this guy get a following? Adolf Shitmouth Hitler wants to take over the world. Screaming up there, spitting. Adolf Hitler liked to portray himself as a Superman, but he had a deep rooted phobia of dentists which may explain why he had such terrible oral hygiene. Oh, my God. And people just... Maybe that's why they did the Heil Hitler. They were trying to block his fucking breath. (laughs) When SS officer John was captured by Soviet forces at the end of the Second War, they were keen to interrogate him. After all, he had served as the personal dentist to several high-ranking Nazis. What's more, it also emerged that he had been the dentist of Adolf Hitler, too. Upon being questioned, Black was only too happy to condemn his former patient. But rather than criticizing Hitler for his crimes against humanity and wars of aggression, the dentist simply revealed him to have been a terrible patient. Furthermore, he made it clear for all his monstrosity, Hitler had an acute fear of the dentist chair. Well, it was the 1940s. I mean, Jesus Christ. According to Dr. Blah, Hitler suffered from terrible bad breath, abscesses, and gum disease. Yuck. Jesus Christ. All right, let's read one more here. Oh, this fucking weirdo. Salvador Dali. This guy. Jesus Christ. In an abusive relationship with his girlfriend. God, she treated him like shit. Was, a, was terrified of insects and had a particular phobia of grasshoppers. A fear that used to influence his work. Grasshoppers? In his day, Salvador Dali was one of the most celebrated. We know what the fuck he did. The clock's melting. We get it. But the printer and sculptor was not always so popular. As a child growing up in Catalonia, he was bullied by boys his own age. Here we go. This is how he started painting. As well as calling him names, they would throw grasshoppers at him. This had a profound and long-lasting effect. How fast were these bullies? They're just catching grasshoppers? They go to the pet store? Augustus Caesar. Jesus Christ. I mean, how far back are you going to go? Augustus Caesar was worried his fucking loincloth was going to fucking come flying up when he was fighting a tiger. All right, overrated. Libraries for studying. Being surrounded by people who are all pretending to not look around and do work can be tough. Uh... College libraries aren't as bad because they have chairs spread out all around in weird places. I don't understand that sentence. Being surrounded by people who are all pretending to not look around and do work can be tough. Oh, that's overrated. Oh, oh, overrated. College libraries aren't as bad because they have chairs spread out all around in weird places. Yeah, the library, the college library, that's, that's like going to the movies. You know, there's always going to be somebody behind you talking, giggling, and just being a douche. So I get that. Um, I get that. Going to the library for study, that's when you got to have the headphones on. 
the Bose noise canceling headphones. Um, which, by the way, you know, I have a pair of those that I've had forever, and they the the inside foamy part, the part that the squishy part that goes against your ears, kept coming off. And somebody told me to super glue it on, so I did. And now the the spongy part is all worn out. So a buddy of mine bought me the replacements because I didn't know you could get a replacement for those things. That's the great thing about Bose is you can you can uh, you know same in aviation. Like if your your headset starts acting up, you send it in, they'll actually repair it. So he bought the replacement ones for my Bose headset thing, but I can't get the other ones off because I use crazy glue. Does anybody know how to un? I never even thought to Google it. Let's see if I can do it now. How to un crazy glue something. How to unsuper glue something. Super glue can be removed from glass, countertops, tiles, and other hard surfaces with rubbing alcohol. Let's see. From plastic. For plastic, lay a damp cloth over the glued areas and secure it tightly. Alternately, soak the glue in vegetable oil or diluted vinegar. Let it sit for a few hours to allow the glue to moisten. I'm going to ruin my headset. Blot the glue with acetones. 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 Or rubbing alcohol and let this substance break down the glue. That's what I'll do. I'll just try blotting it with alcohol. All right. Anyways, that is the podcast, everybody. Go Red Sox. Go fuck yourselves. Enjoy the next couple of days. And uh, there's no reason to be afraid of sharks or dentists or to kill 6 million people who didn't do anything to you. All right, that's the podcast. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday.